how, how are things going? Yeah, all right, mate. Um, yeah, I mean, still alive, still healthy. That's the main thing, you know. Um, yeah, it's a nice day today, so that's going to help. Uh, but yeah, I guess the same as everyone, you know, working from home. Yeah. Just same old Groundhog Day. <laughs> so I watched the film earlier in the week. Uh, it's also getting its you know, premiere, Glasgow Film Festival. And it's yeah. nominated for one of the audience uh, awards. You know, how does that feel? What What's that like to be in that stage? Yeah, awesome, man. I mean, I'm so happy to be having the world premiere at Glasgow. Like, it's a great festival. Like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm super, super happy to, to be having it up there. Everyone's been so lovely um, and supportive. Um, so, so, yeah, and to be nominated for an audience award is just, like, awesome. So, so, so great. Like, uh, you know, the audience award is, is you know, it's who we make films for is, is the audience. So, so to have that is great. It's great. I'm very grateful. Does it almost feel like a relief that the film is finally out and you get to just, I suppose, enjoy, you know, the, the festival? Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I'm excited. Hopefully I'm going to get to see some of the other films that are at the festivals and um, at the festival, sorry. And uh, and yeah, I guess it is kind of it is kind of a relief. I guess when you're working on something for so long, it is, um, it's always the kind of, you, don't, you, you think, oh God, this is, this is going to take a long time. It's going to be five or so years till till the end of this process. But, um, but you know, it changes. All the different parts of the process are really different. And now I get to, you know, speak to other people that have seen the film. So for so long, it's just been me and the producers or the people that worked on the film. And now for you, for you, for you guys to come in and, and see it is, is great because I can kind of, it yeah. feels new to me again. You know what I mean? Because other people have got to experience it. So... So yeah, and I'm really glad everyone's loving it so far. When did the when did the journey start for you uh, for this film, and how did the you know the idea you know come to fruition? Um, so the journey started for me with Microwave, which is a um, scheme that is run by Film London, and uh, it supports two emerging filmmakers. Uh, commissions two emerging filmmakers every year for the first feature that has to be produced on 150K budget. So it's a yeah. micro budget um, filmmaking scheme. Um, so initially I, I, I went there with a, a really, really early version of a almost entirely different script. Um, and that sort of went through the process there. Um, and I learned a lot from the mentors and the people that work at Film London as well. And um, and yeah, so I kind of went through through that process and then we got commissioned off the back of that. and. And yeah, I guess all in all, the process has probably been around five, four or five years um, yeah. to get to, to this stage. But um, one of the first things I kind of noticed is you really capture well, you know, that moment in most of our lives that we've had, you know, kind of at some point. Um, how much of your own you know, kind of personal experience did you draw on, you know, for that? I guess a lot, but then also it's set nowadays so it's it's you know it's set in a time with with phones and and things so so I guess I would say it's somewhat kind of inspired by the awkwardness of um of growing up and kind of looking back retrospectively upon yeah. that um in reference to kind of how I sort of grew up as a queer teen I guess um but yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's updated. Um, it's, you know, it's about kids nowadays. So, so yeah, I guess it's kind of semi-inspired by a sort of personal um, feeling, I guess. And most of us can relate to, you know, this is a kind of very British thing of being dragged, you know, on those caravan holidays. You know, was that something that you had to kind of endure? <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of us have. I mean, definitely, if you're if you're kind of working class British, I think you're. Uh, I think you know um, how it feels to be dragged down to the to Caister or wherever it may be to for your um for your holiday. But um, so yeah, I mean, I grew up going to holiday parks, and when I was really young, I always found them quite magical places. You know, um, that when you when you can't afford to go to Disney World or whatever it is, it's kind of the next yeah. next best thing that you've got. And I think. You know, there's something there's something really special about that, and I think there's now a kind of nostalgia looking back on it, um, and 
it, it feels like very quintessentially British for me, that kind of whole idea of the, the British holiday park down to the kind of the yeah. cheesy entertainment. It all kind of, it's all a part of it. And, um, and yeah, I kind of really wanted to, I guess, sort of pay homage to the, to the classic British holiday park. It's almost yeah. a rite of passage, um, you know, for, for <laughs> Brits to, to go through that. Um, mm. You know, this is a, a film that, you know, you've written and, you know, directed and you've got, you know, that kind of experience already. But with it being your feature debut, did your mm. approach change in, in any way? Um, approach as in sort of making the film? or Yeah, yeah or... just uh, how you would kind of tackle, you know, the project yeah. compared to your shots, for example. Yeah, I mean, it was just... Okay, I guess it was just a kind of a, a bigger, a bigger sort of version of, of what I'd been doing before. I mean, I kind of came up doing a lot of my own stuff and um I didn't really get much funding sort of till sort of late in the game. So I was very used to doing stuff like without much permission and without much kind of outside interference. Um which is great for when you're learning and stuff like that. But I, I suppose with Sweetheart it kind of just uh, I had a bigger team than I'd worked with before. I had a bigger cast than I'd worked with before. Yeah. I was on location for a month instead of, I think the the longest shoot I'd done prior to Sweetheart would have been maybe three, four, day, four days maximum. Yeah. Um, and, well, and I was going into kind of like 18 to 20. But um, so, yeah, so it was a kind of massive jump in in that respect, for sure. Um but great at the same time, like a huge, huge challenge. But um, yeah, amazing. And just to quickly, you know, talk about Nell. Uh, she's growing as uh, as AJ. Um, for you, what was it about her that you know that kind of brought the character, you know, to to life? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, Nell was amazing. I'm I'm glad you said that. Like, uh, she's she's really really great. She's such a talent, and um, and she's so humble. So. Um, I, I, I think it's really nice that you said that um but yeah I mean with with the casting of AJ I think we saw a lot of people we um we really we really wanted to get that right like and I kind of knew in my head what what that character needed to be and the kind of energy they needed to present it's sort of almost on and off screen, just like a general kind of energy that they needed to have. And I think we saw about 150 girls and there was some really, really great talent. And there was always something about Nell that kind of stuck with us. Um, and, you know, this is, this is the first sort of big thing that she'd done. She hadn't done much prior to that, but that kind of never really, that didn't really kind of hinder my, you know, what I, what I wanted to do I kind of didn't I didn't really matter um and I think with Nell she just kind of had this this energy that I recognized in myself I guess as probably a little bit of my younger self that I could have sort of seen in her um she had this kind of sort of timid awkward energy but also very honest um and I think I hope that comes across on screen. Like I'm, I'm super, super proud of her. I think she's done an amazing job. Like to be able to hold a, a feature, like as one of your first jobs, is like is amazing. She's great. Uh, so a lot of the film, obviously, uh, is about you know representing of you know LGBTQ you know I you know community. How important was it for you to you know put that on screen, especially on the stage of GFA? Yeah, I mean. Uh, definitely it was amazingly um, well it was definitely important for me to to do that it, it was um, what I wanted to do was was I guess give the younger generation um, a film that I didn't have when I was younger and um, and I grew up with a lot of uh, watching a lot of queer films that were rooted a lot in trauma um, and uh, it was a it was something that was always on my mind that I wanted to make an uplifting film for, for a young queer audience and specifically centered around a young lesbian as well, because so much, I think we've seen uh, the lesbian character be the, the, the weird girl or, or the butt of the joke in, 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 uh, in a lot of sort of teenage coming of age stuff, which is fine. But, uh, but I wanted to kind of specifically say, no, she's going to be front and center um, and she's going to have a, an uplifting story that isn't that isn't rooted in any sort of trauma and and hopefully we can give the young queer 
audience a bit of a bit of hope and and they can see themselves reflected on screen that was that was really really important for me and how much a challenge was it um you know to create that dynamic between you know joe hartley um and nell you know and the kind of moments of tension you know that relate to that yeah i think i mean a lot of it is kind of inspired by the the adult, the adults around me when I was kind of going through a lot of that. And specifically, I wanted to, um, I guess it's, it's worth making this clear that I wanted to make um, a film that wasn't a coming about, a uh, coming out story. Uh, it wasn't about her coming out. She'd already come out. Um, and I think, you know, we can kind of build up this moment of coming out so much. Um, but really, like, once that's happened, there's a lot that goes after that right you know sometimes you have to come out again and again and again to different family members who constantly ask you why you don't have a boyfriend or or um you know so there's kind of all these nuances that come out in these relationships after the fact and um I think it was really important to me that kind of Joe um came from a place of love um and and support she just did it in the only way she knew how and that's and that's based upon her being from a different era and gay people were treated differently back then and it wasn't cool and trendy back then um so her experience of people being gay is is uh, is very different to to teenagers nowadays for instance so i wanted to specifically make joe uh, tina the character come from she's coming from a place of love and it's it's almost she wants to she wants to support and she wants to care and she's i guess a little bit fearful um about her daughter being gay and kind of dressing quite masculine um but deep down all of her all of her anxieties and, and the little you know things that she says that are, can come across ignorant or whatever it, it comes from a place of love it's just somebody of a, of a different era um re, you know reacting to that so so yeah i guess that was kind of important for me to show the the separations of the generations and how how they have sort of how that how they deal with the nuances of, of that within their nuclear family, I guess. What was um you know kind of striking to me is you know AJ's style, you know, it's a kind of nineties style uh, almost. Um is that something that was there from the offset or did that only come about when AJ uh, was well, sort of when Nell was cast and you guys you know were kind of working things out? I think I think I always, I mean, like I grew up in the nineties, right? So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always going to kind of, I guess that's instinct. My mind is going to kind of reference back to those, um, those styles, those colors, those, those kind of themes. Um, and also because that's how I remember the, the holiday parks and the spaces are very kind of nineties. Yeah. Right. And also those spaces are almost stuck in time. Like if you go back to the holiday parks now, they're, they're, they're pretty much stuck in time. Like the whole world outside them has moved on, but they're very, they're still in the nineties almost um, a lot of those places. So I think it was kind of a mixture of kind of wanting to keep it in, in, in theme with the, the kind of nostalgia of the holiday park, but also kind of having this um, kind of sort of grungy mod esque element. It was very much like she wanted to, hide herself in the beginning she was hiding herself through the through the layers of clothing and kind of not wanting to show anyone her the shape of her body um or kind of the feminine aspects of her body and then similarly her eyes and her hair with the hat like so we wanted to kind of like build this kind of layer around around AJ to begin with and then she sort of slowly starts to take them off throughout the film do you think the you know that setting of the holiday park, um, you know that kind of enclosed, you know, you know, intimate setting, you know, did that help, you know, the cast bond? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we were we were down there for for a good sort of month. Um, the, you know, most of the the crew were down there for a month, um, and the cast were there for a good couple of weeks, and some of them were coming for a few days, leaving and then coming back again. So. It was almost, you know, like it, it kind of felt just like we were almost like an, on a working holiday with a lot of mates. And we all stayed down there on set on on the park that we shot at in the caravans. Um, so it was a very sort of close encounter, <laughs> um, but great at the same time, because, you know, it, it we, we sort of experienced it all together. You know, we had 
barbecues on the beach on the weekends and we got to see the entertainment that was still happening at, at the holiday park and things like that so so yeah I think it really it really kind of helped us to be in that one spot um to kind of build a little community that we had it was great it's like a movie with an inbuilt rap party you know for when everything uh, <laughs> yeah. over and over and done with and just kind of one final question um you know what is it that you're working on you know at the moment you know you've got all this time in kind of lockdown to you know write you know what is it that you're you know working on just just now um i'm working on a few things currently i'm working on a tv pilot um which i'm hoping is going to be made into a series um and um, i'm due to direct a film in the states um possibly next year now uh with, with everything that's happening and um and then i'm kind of really early stages on a on a second feature idea so so yeah i mean stuff's happening i'm trying to kind of keep busy but as well as that you know like i, I like to paint a lot so i'm painting and and, and doing other things as well to keep my mind occupied and that tv series so you allowed to see anything at this point or is it firmly uh, under wraps i'm not allowed to say anything no <laughs> i'm gonna get in lots of trouble if i speak about it um but uh what can i say what can i say it's uk and hopefully it'll have an amazing group of young people in it you can take the Tom Holland approach and just say, I have no idea what this project I'm working on. I have on. no idea what it's about. I have no idea. <laughs> well, Molly, uh, you know, thanks so much. You can get a chat with you and uh, you know, best luck with the, the release in the movie. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.